Okay, so let's get right into it. OpenAI just dropped something pretty big, a brand new version of ChatGPT that's built just for your health and wellness. It's called ChatGPT Health, and the whole idea is to finally bring all your scattered health info together into one smart, secure place. So, does this sound familiar? You've got your lab results in one hospital portal, your workout data is in a completely different app, your watch is tracking your sleep, and then you have random medical notes saved as PDFs somewhere on your computer. It's, it's a total mess, right? Trying to see the big picture of your own health can feel next to impossible. And it turns out we're not alone in this struggle. Check out this number, 230 million. That's how many people are already turning to chat GPT every single week with health and wellness questions. It's a huge sign that people are desperate for better tools to manage their health. And that's really the reality for most of us, isn't it? We're stuck trying to find our way through this complicated maze of our own health information all by ourselves. It's fragmented, it's confusing, and honestly, it makes it really tough to feel like you're in the driver's seat. So OpenAI's answer to this whole maze problem is ChatGPT Health. The core concept is actually pretty simple, but it's also incredibly powerful. Create one single dedicated and secure spot where you can bring all of your health data together and then use AI to actually make sense of it. But how does it actually pull that off? Let's pop the hood and see exactly how this new guide is supposed to work. Basically, the system works by connecting your entire health world. You can link up your official medical records, you can pull in all that data from Apple Health, and you can even connect the wellness apps you're already using every day, you know, like Peloton for your workouts, MyFitnessPal for nutrition, or All Trails for your hikes. The goal here is to finally build that complete, holistic picture we've all been missing. Now, for the really sensitive stuff, we're talking your official medical records, they've teamed up with a company called Be Well for users in the U.S., and this is a super important detail because BeWell is specifically built to meet the highest, most stringent security and privacy standards in the healthcare industry. That's absolutely non-negotiable when you're talking about this kind of data. And that brings us to maybe the biggest question of all. Can you actually trust this thing? It seems like OpenAI is trying to get ahead of that by building this entire experience on a foundation of two key things, privacy and real medical expertise. Okay, this slide is where it gets really, really interesting. Look at how clearly it separates ChatGPT Health from the standard version. Here's the key takeaway. Your conversations and data inside Health will not be used to train their models, period. It all lives in a separate, dedicated space with beefed up, purpose-built encryption. This isn't just some filter. We're talking about a fundamentally different policy for handling your data. And this quote from their announcement really just hammers that point home. Think of it like a digital walled garden. Your health information is completely contained within this special space. It's designed to keep your most sensitive data from ever leaking out. But, you know, privacy is only half the battle. What about medical accuracy? Well, this tool was developed in close collaboration with over 260 physicians. And these weren't just doctors from one area. They represented 60 different countries, which brought a really crucial global perspective to the whole project. And get this. Over two years, this global team of doctors provided more than 600,000 individual pieces of feedback on the AI's answers. This was a massive, physician-led effort, all focused on shaping how the model responds, how it communicates clearly, when it should tell you to see a doctor, and how to put safety above everything else. Okay, so we've established it's private and it's built with input from experts. But what can you actually do with it? Let's check out some real-world practical applications. So imagine this. Instead of squinting at a confusing lab report trying to figure out what all those numbers mean, you just ask for a summary in plain English. This isn't just about making your life easier. It's about empowering you to walk into that doctor's appointment ready and informed as a real partner in your own care. Or think about lifestyle goals. It could look at your recent life events, like having a baby, and combine that with your connected fitness data to help you create a plan that's actually realistic. It's a move away from generic advice and towards proactive, personalized wellness that actually fits your life. It can even help with more complex, data-heavy stuff. By analyzing your past medical history, it could help you compare different insurance plans based on what you've actually needed in the past. That could give you so much more agency when you're trying to navigate what is, let's face it, a really confusing and expensive system. Okay, now this is probably the most important slide here, so let's be super clear. ChatGPT Health is a tool to support you. It's for understanding, for preparing, for navigating. It is absolutely 100% not for getting a diagnosis or for replacing the actual medical care you get from a doctor or nurse. 
So thinking of this thing as an AI health co-pilot is probably the perfect way to frame it. It's there to help you on your journey. So let's look at the path forward if this sounds interesting to you. The process looks pretty straightforward. First step is to join the waitlist. Once you get access, you'll see a new health option right there in the sidebar. And from that point, you can start connecting all your different records and apps. Just a quick heads up on availability, just to manage expectations. They're starting with a small group of early users, and it'll be available across most of the ChatGPT plants. But for now, it's not available in the European Economic Area, Switzerland, or the UK. And that secure medical record integration we talked about, that's US only to start. And that really brings us to the big picture. This isn't just about a new feature in an app. This is about potentially changing our entire relationship with our own health information. You know, moving from something that's scattered and confusing to something that's unified, understandable, and actionable. So the big question is, could this really be the beginning of a new era for how we manage our personal health?